What up space fam, goals in here from Anime Uproar and I'm back at it again to discuss the latest episode of the Attack on Titan final season. This episode was called Assault and it did not disappoint so make sure to stay tuned for that. If you do enjoy seeing these Attack on Titan videos and want to keep them coming then the best thing you could do is Warhammer smash that like button and share this video with any Attack on Titan fans that you know. If you haven't be sure to subscribe and this is crucial hit that notification bell and select all or you will miss future Attack on Titan videos. And and while you wait for the next insane episode to drop, feel free to check out our growing Attack on Titan playlist where we got videos about all the Titan shifters and their powers, all the Ackermans and their powers, the Titans rank from weakest to strongest, and much more. Link to that is in the description. Now without further ado, let's jump into the new episode. We begin where we left off with Porco freaking out at seeing an Ackerman, Levi specifically. He had Aaron, he was one bite away, but Levi cut his jaw and saved Aaron from being eaten in the process. The other Survey Corps members are also coming to kill Porco, a titan. He's scared at this reversal and calls them the Devils of Paradise. Marley and their titans are used to people running from them, so having others attack them and even try to kill their titans as humans must really throw them off. Luckily for Porco, Peak's card titan comes in, with her equipment and carrying her team members as well, who proceed to fire off shots at the Survey Corps. With the anime, I definitely felt like there were many Survey Corps deaths. More than it seemed like to me when I read the manga. Whatever happens, this clearly wasn't a smooth operation. We see the Warhammer Titan use her powers to lift Eren's Titan body into the air, impaling him even better this time. Eren is still holding the crystal with the tricky Warhammer Titan user, Lara Tiber, inside of it. Finally, the Beast Titan appears in this episode, Marley's strongest warrior. He is the beacon of hope for Marley and the other warriors who look up to him as their captain. In the meantime, Gabby is enraged, just as Eren was when his hometown was attacked by Titans, and she wants to kill Eren to make him pay. Zeke tells his warriors to kill them all and to let none of them escape. There is such a hype moment showing Levi versus Zeke approaching each other right before the intro comes on. The only thing more epic than this lead up to the intro song is when people smash that like button. But smash like buttons aside, this is possibly the best rivalry in Attack on Titan and it's so hype that we might get to see a rematch here between Humanity's Strongest Soldier and Marley's Strongest Warrior. We then jump to Falco, who was saved by Reiner's armored titan body parts, which shielded him from Eren and the destruction caused by his transformation. Interestingly enough, Reiner himself is unconscious although he looks okay, aside from the fact that his human body is taking on armored titan characteristics around his jaw area. Clearly something isn't right. As Falco points out, he should heal as long as he has the will to live, but he doesn't and that's the problem. When confronted with Eren, he actually said that he was sick of himself and asked to be killed. He feels so guilty for his past actions that death would be a relief for him at this point. It is a very interesting turn, you'd hardly expect that a lack of will to live could play such a crucial role in the middle of a very intense and important battle. Peak and Porco, in their titans, go on to protect Zeke's back, so people don't catch him off guard. Many Survey Corps members die, even if they are extras who we aren't emotionally invested in. In this episode, it was interesting seeing Peak talk so much in her titan form, and Porco spoke with her too, but exited his titan body to do so. Eren tries to to use his titan to bite through the crystal, but it's no use, his teeth actually break rather than the crystal. He knows that it's definitely like Annie's, and with Annie's there's nothing they know of that could break or even scratch it. It's a very difficult situation to be in in the middle of a battlefield, but luckily he does realize that Lara Tiber is completely worn out since he knows she could have killed him by now, penetrated straight through his nape if she had more juice left. So although the Warhammer Titan is amazing, it's clear that its amazing hardening powers come at a price. It runs out of steam much sooner. Eren transformed first and he's still good to go. He actually undertakes a third transformation to Porco's surprise and pulls it off, showing how much endurance he has at this point. Unlike Reiner, Eren clearly has a very strong drive to keep on fighting. 
he's definitely not begging to die before he carries out his mission. In the meantime, Peek wants to handle this situation cautiously. From her view, Marleyan forces have the clear advantage. They have the home field advantage and reinforcements are coming, while Aaron and the Survey Corps appear to be stranded in enemy territory. Porco is less willing to be cautious, but he follows Peek's lead initially. Meanwhile, the Beast Titan does his thing by grounding and throwing rocks at the enemy. The rocks move through the air like clusters of high-speed bullets. At first, Zeke worries Peek and Porco when he says, Aaron is not my enemy. <laughs> They're like, WTF bro, and I'm sure we all thought that. But then he says he wants to face his nemesis Levi first. A bit weird, but maybe he feels like Levi is the priority because he is the strongest soldier after all. We then jump to possibly the craziest moment in this episode, although it is so hard to choose just one because there are so many insane moments. But in this case, we see the navy forces in the water, these ships are ready to back up the Marleyan side, and then we see a small boat with a lone hooded figure riding on it. The hood comes off and it's Armin, and the next thing you know, bam, he transforms and there's a giant nuclear-like explosion that not only hits the boats, but a good portion of the land as well. We finally see Armin's colossal titan in this episode, and it's crazy to think that Armin would use the power to kill so many people, including children, just like Eren did. Jumping to Porco's perspective, it seems clear to him now that this isn't just some wacky improvisation on Eren's part. The Paradis side clearly has a plan and he decides to move in on Eren, knowing that if they can get the founding titan, then there will be nothing to fear from the island. However, that just leaves Peek defending Zeke's back, and amid all the confusion of the Colossal Titan explosion, Levi uses his insane speed to come up out of nowhere and he takes out Zeke and his beast Titan, like it was nothing. It's crazy how fast it happens, before anyone can even react. We're almost not sure what we saw. He drops a bomb, seemingly killing Zeke for good. And wow, imagine what Peek and the others must be feeling right now. They just went from feeling like they were in the superior position to their reinforcement being completely wiped out by the Colossal Titan, and their strongest warrior, their beacon of hope, has just been taken out effortlessly and in no time flat. It wouldn't be a surprise if they just fell apart at this point, but the fight keeps going. Peek and her shooters are the next target and Sasha kills one of them. She's clearly an amazing shot with that rifle. Before they can get revenge on Sasha, Peek's titan gets attacked by countless thunder spears and seemingly all of her riders die and she is badly hurt. She is quick-witted though and jumps off the roof, which saves her from being killed right away. But she's very close to death, and at least in regards to this battle, another warrior bites the dust. At the halfway point in this episode, on the informational page, we're simply told that the Survey Corps gear got certain upgrades, which you may have noticed. These upgrades include semi-automatic pistols and anti-titan shells. Clearly, they've used the time skip to improve their already impressive gear. We then see the damage Armin caused. It is crazy. It looks like the end of the world. The ground is scorched, hands pop out from the debris, the land is completely leveled, kids are still struggling under the rubble, and the colossal titan continues to march forward. Armin comes out of it and is clearly sad slash horrified to see what he has done. He wonders if Bertolt saw these horrors too. After all, he did use the colossal titan to do a similar thing to the people of Paradis. Let me know if you prefer Armin's or Bertolt's Colossal Titan design in the comments because they do have certain differences. Even though things have taken a very dark turn in Attack on Titan, I'm still glad that Armin now has the Colossal Titan rather than Bertolt. But you gotta admit, it is crazy to see a character like Armin doing stuff like this and becoming the God of Destruction, which is a name Marley used for the Colossal Titan power and not a reference to Dragon Ball Z. We also see Jean about to finish off Peak, but Falco begs him not to. Steam comes out of the cart Titan and Gene misses, but he's not sure and we're not sure if it was because of the steam or maybe because Kid Falco made him hesitate and thus missed a shot. We then go back to the crazy Attack on Titan vs Jaw Titan battle. Eren appears to get an amazing breathtaking punch on the Jaw Titan and yet you gotta give Porco props. He turns a possible punch to the face into a counter attack where he bites off Eren's arm. In the manga he actually crushed Eren's hardened Titan fists, but but here he does even better. Porco is clearly doing an amazing job against Eren's titan, scratching him all over. Eren tries to block with the unbreakable crystal and surprise surprise, the 
the Jaw Titan actually leaves a mark. The Jaw Titan is the key, the only known key, to breaking through these almost indestructible Titan crystals. This was crazy info for me the first time I read it in the manga, and it made me respect the Jaw Titan power a lot more. Not only that though, Mikasa also notices that Porco's Jaw Titan is very fast, nothing like Ymir's version, suggesting that Porco is a very talented shifter. This combination of insane speed and the strongest slashes you've ever seen makes Porco's Jaw Titan a force to be reckoned with. Unfortunately for Porco though, it was not a good idea for him to show up because he is the key to breaking the crystal and allowing Aaron to get the Warhammer Titan, but more on that in a bit. We also jump to Peak, who is not healing so well. We are told that unlike the Armor Titan, the Card Titan isn't known for its toughness. So although its endurance is good in the sense that Peak can maintain the transformation for months, the defense and regeneration abilities are not that good. This explains why they equip the Card Titan with military armor, because it is so vulnerable. We then see an airship show up to the shock of all the Marleans, who wouldn't assume that the Survey Corps had access to this kind of technology. The lights that were previously being placed around the city serve as guidance for the ship. Hanji and Armin are in there together now, along with some new characters. We'll learn more about these new characters as we go on in the season, but for now I'd like to mention the convo where Hanji notes how crazy Armin's plan is and if he got possessed by Erwin. Armin hopes he did because that would mean that Erwin's strength is with him. This is a nice respectful nod to the legend himself, Erwin, but also a huge compliment to Armin, who let's be real is one of the smartest characters in the series and comes up with the best plans. Furthermore, he now has has access to the Colossal Titan, so he's definitely one of the most overall OP characters in the series now, one of Paradis's most valuable soldiers. And Armin pretty much notes that they had no choice but to rescue Eren here, because without Eren and the others, there is no future for them. Although Armin is not the kind of guy who would kill if it wasn't absolutely necessary, he feels like he didn't have a choice in this case. If he didn't, then he might have not only lost his friend Eren, but also his own life and also the lives of all the people on his home island. Armin is a complex and underrated character and we should not underestimate how hard it was for him to do what he did in this episode. But back to Porco's amazing jaw titan. If the survey corps didn't turn up to support Eren, Eren would have lost against the combined powers of the Warhammer titan and the jaw titan for sure. However, Mikasa did show up and after saving Eren a bunch of times from the Warhammer titan in the last episode, she also helps him here against the jaw titan by cutting off its legs. Eren Eren works quickly and takes off its arms too, then he proceeds to do something that even Porco thinks is some kind of sick joke. He shoves the Titan Crystal of the Warhammer Titan into the Jaw Titan's mouth in order to break the crystal. The lethal and speedy Jaw Titan has been turned into a nutcracker, for all intents and purposes, the ultimate insult. And Eren proceeds to inherit the Warhammer Titan power along with Lara Tiber's blood, which also contained her spinal fluid, the key ingredient when inheriting Titan powers. I honestly felt like Eren could have taken the Jotain power too here pretty easily, but instead he continued to smash the Jotain's face into the ground until the yelling of Gabby and Falco reached Reiner. Reiner wants to die in peace, but he half-heartedly transforms because of Gabby and Falco. They have given him enough will, enough of a push to transform, but notably the transformation looks very human and incomplete. As I mentioned, I think this is because his will to fight is wavering at this point, not giving him complete access to his power. Hours. Still though, it's enough for Reiner to rescue Porco this time, returning the favor from the Fort Slava battle. Eren's Titan was just about to bite through the Jaw Titan's nape when the transformation occurred, but when he saw it, he decided to turn around and look at Reiner instead of just continuing to bite through it. And that is the end of this episode, possibly the best episode of Attack on Titan yet. Let me know your thoughts about it and what you're excited to see next. In the preview of the next episode, we do find out that the Armor Titan falls, that Gabby picks up a rifle and runs off, and that the episode is called Assassin's Bullet, suggesting that Gabby might assassinate someone in the very next episode. But yeah, this final season is turning out to be amazing. We got Eren taking the Warhammer Titan power in this episode, we figure out that the Jaw Titan has the power to break through a Titan Crystal, we saw Armin's Colossal Titan, and we saw Levi take out the Beast Titan before anyone knew what was going on, and many 
more insane developments, like Reiner's eerily human Titan transformation. Anime episodes just don't get more action packed than this one, and it was absolutely incredible. If you did enjoy seeing this Attack on Titan episode review and want to keep them coming, then the best thing you could do is Warhammer smash that like button, really destroy it with no mercy, ruthless Aaron style. If you haven't, be sure to subscribe, and this is crucial, hit that notification bell and select all, or you will miss future Attack on Titan videos. And while you wait for the next insane episode to drop, feel free to check out our growing Attack on Titan playlist, where we got videos about all the Titan shifters and their powers, all the Ackermans and their powers, Titans rank from weakest to strongest, and much more. Link to that is in the description. And I especially want to thank the Patreon squad over on Patreon and here on YouTube who help make videos like this one possible. First and foremost, I want to thank the Patron of Legend, the one acknowledged by Lord Twigo himself, and the most donated champion of the world, Alpha Sigma. And are the one tier patrons, the ones who stand atop all clans, Ingrata, the world, Acquire Respect, Pate Hefa, Dr. Cortman, Rithian, Emperor Otaku, Spidey Life Tanel, Baked Buddhist, and Tungsten Tarkis. And our pro hero tier patrons, the one and only Gilgamesh, Steelers, Angel Cruz, Anatoly Kazatsky, Joel Stanton, Barry Gucci, Jessica Kayla Fawn, Ruthuan De Aura, Alicia Actor, Bonnie Parks, Hinokami and Water, The Red Haired Raven, Florian, Joanne Garcia, Jack Watches Anime, Fatboy Games, Deadly Saint, Matthew Cruz, Anthony Schreiber, Hijinx, and Mr. Waffles. Thank you all so much. If you enjoy our work, you can support more of it by going over to patreon.com slash anime uproar and becoming a patron today for as little as one dollar. If you do so, you'll get your name featured in future videos alongside these amazing epic people right here and you'll even get access to our private patron only discord where we talk about anime life and of course dank memes so check out patreon.com slash anime uproar link in the description if you're interested you can also join the youtube channel by clicking that blue join button next to the subscribe button which you've hopefully already destroyed so yeah you can support more content that way if you prefer and whichever way you choose to support us you can get the same great benefits thanks again and until next time, see ya, Space Cowboys!